Skylanders hub worlds are a big part of the games that really aren't talked about as much as they should be. As most of the focus goes to the gameplay, the characters, and the levels, hub worlds are always kind of pushed to the side. But honestly, I feel like they're really important to the game. They add a feeling of stability and familiarity throughout the game as it progresses, and they always feel like somewhere you can go back to in between levels to just feel comfortable while playing Skylanders. I've recently gone back through and played through all the hub worlds in the Skylanders games, and in this video, I'm going to be going pretty in depth in between all the hub worlds and talk about what I like, what I dislike, and just how I feel about all of them overall. For the most part, they're all vastly different, which creates very different vibes when you're playing in these hub worlds. This not only creates distinction between the games, but also definitely makes it worth playing through all these hub worlds and really talking about what's different and what's good about each one. So without further ado, let's jump right into it with Spire's Adventures Hub World. Spire's Adventures Hub World, the Core of Light, I always thought was pretty fun. I thought it was pretty okay, probably pretty average for Skylanders Hub World. But going back and playing it again and playing through it and just exploring everything there is to see, it was surprisingly good. I really liked this Hub World. I thought it did everything pretty perfectly and I really liked how it was laid out. There's lots of spots to explore and lots of stuff to do as well as interesting, different, unique locations rather than it just feeling like the same sort of hub area the entire way around. As you explore the Hub World, it seems like there's different parts with different environments and different characters that really adds originality as well as personality to this hub world which i can definitely respect it for the awesome scenery being a cliff overhanging the ocean also really helps this might be the coolest location and the most well delivered or right, well executed hub world as far as where it is located and using that to its advantage compared to the other hub worlds which are kind of just in the middle of nowhere i mean you'll hit giants just a ship flying through the sky endlessly spars adventure being a very grounded hub world in a really cool location i think is awesome and it really does add to how cinematic it feels and how just awesome and cool the exploration is overall npcs from the entire game are also are very visible in this hub world as you explore it you see all these characters that you interact with and that are big parts of the story and even once you complete the game they're still there and they're near their respective levels which is really cool you just see all these parts and characters like the weapons master and arbo and t-bone and all these different characters that you saw throughout the game are all visible in the hub world which i can really appreciate it for as games like trap team a lot of these characters just aren't there after you deal with them and you just don't see them ever again i also think this hub world is just a really good size it's not too big not too small at least just a good size overall which really does combine with the exploration it does really accentuate how awesome this hub world really is if i was to give it a score i would honestly give this hub world a 9 out of 10 i think it pretty much nails everything perfectly of course you could always improve it just a little bit but there really isn't much more they could do i think this is a very very well executed hub world which i can really respect considering it's only the first game in the series now looking at giants it's no secret that this hub world is a lot smaller the flynn's dread yacht is a lot smaller than the hub world from spire's adventure is that necessarily a bad thing i think it depends on who you ask me personally it's probably going to be my hottest take of this video i don't think it's really nearly as good as the spire's adventure hub and i think it's quite I think it's quite frankly a lot worse, which really comes down to the size and the fact that the main gimmick landers of this game are giants doesn't really help because if you're using much bigger Skylanders in a much smaller hub world, it's just going to feel more cramped overall. It definitely does feel cramped when you're using giants. If you're playing through this with giants, it sometimes feels like they shouldn't even be able to go into these narrow corridors in between these doors and into these tiny little rooms. It feels like they were not designed with giants in mind, which is kind of weird since the whole gimmick is giants. Um, there's a decent amount of stuff to do and spots to explore, which I can actually appreciate, but since it is all the dread yacht, nothing really seems unique. I mean, each room kind of looks familiar, kind of looks like the last room. Is this a bad thing? I really think it comes down to who you ask. I don't think it's that bad of a thing, but it's something to note. It doesn't feel as diverse as the Spire's Adventure Hub World. Everything sort of feels streamlined and everything has sort of the same visual look, as well as the NPCs. You kind of start the game off with the same characters in the Hub World as it ends off with. There's no diversifying how many characters are there by the end of the story it's not like the whole world looks completely different with a bunch of new characters it is the same ones that have been there the entire game it's just a lot more condensed overall a lot of the characters are eliminated it keeps just the classic ones i mean you got flynn Callie, Persephone, Brock, and that's kind of it as far as this hub world goes. You really don't see many other characters here, and there's just not that much space to roam around. Uh, really, one of my favorite parts of a hub world is if it gives you space to roam around, just stuff to do and space to explore, an area to cover and walk around with your Skylander, so it doesn't feel like you're in this tiny little spot and you need to go to a level. The Giants Hub really just doesn't do this for me. You're really sitting on the ship, you're either outside or inside. While you're outside, there isn't really much space to explore, and if you're inside, 
gets even more condensed and cramped because all the rooms are separate. It's not like there's one big room you can just explore to your heart's content. It is all kind of separated into different chunks, which really does kind of ruin this hub world for me. Honestly, I would give it a 6 out of 10 if I had to give it a rating. Nothing too crazy. I don't think it's too, too bad, but I think it could have been a lot better. And I think coming from the Spires Adventure hub world, this one just doesn't hold up. I used to like the Giants hub world a lot more, but after going back and really exploring it to its to its absolute extent to the most getting the most i possibly could out of this whole world i realize it just doesn't hold up compared to some of the other hub worlds in these calendars games now looking at swap force woodboro is definitely a big change from the past two hubs it's kind of in the middle of the road as far as all these calendars hub worlds go i would say it is kind of middle of the pack it isn't one of the worst ones it's also not one of the best ones it's just kind of there in the middle it's good overall, but it doesn't do anything too crazy. There's nothing that I really love about it. I think it definitely does go back and is more similar to the Spire's Venture Hub. Definitely more similar to SSA's Hub World than it is to Giant's Hub World, which is probably a good thing because, of course, I did like Spire's Venture's Hub World a lot more than Giant's. Um, there's a good amount of stuff to do. There's definitely a lot of areas to explore, good amount of NPCs to interact with, and, you know, little stuff you can do here and there. There's little turn sections, there's shops. It's a decent amount of stuff, decent amount of content, which is, of course, what we want to see from a hub world. It, does it do anything too crazy that we haven't seen yet? Not really. I think the addition of some shops is kind of cool, where I believe you can buy hats and other little trinkets like that, which are kind of kind of interesting, but something not really too crazy. You could hide it away in a menu if you wanted. It feels much bigger than Giant which is definitely good this hub world does feel big it feels extensive there's a lot of spots you can go around and explore even if you're using the game's gimmick landers or if even if you're using giants there's a lot of fun stuff you can do and there's a lot of area to roam around in which is something i can always appreciate there is it doesn't feel like you're condensed in this tiny little claustrophobic area you have a bunch of room to freely roam around and just get the most out of this hub world no matter what scatter you're using there's also um some good amount of npcs to talk to nothing too crazy but but there are, of course, NPCs, not as good as Spire's Adventure, I'd say, but there's there's definitely there's definitely characters you can still interact with, talk to, depending on what part of the game you're in. Something else that I do like is that the elementals show up here with their levels in sort of the middle of the hub world. You can see all the elementals stacked up once you've sort of saved them, which is really cool, really cool touch that really does show you how far you progress in the game and you can go through and sort of see all of them. I can really respect it for that. It does also feel very unique compared to all the other hub worlds. And a lot of this, I think, is due to the location, which kind of feels very weird. I mean, so it probably feels the most similar to Spire's Adventure, which was sort of in the like overhanging cliff over the ocean, which I still thought was really cool. But then looking at this one, you're sort of up in the trees. It's another pretty interesting location, which I can respect it for. But then all the new NPCs, I feel like also make this a very distinct hub world because, of course, you got the Hit Bros and Rufus and the Chief and tests on all these new NPCs that really make this hub world feel unique and really make it give off heavy SWAT force energy, which depending on who you ask, that could be a good thing or a bad thing. For me, it's kind of middle of the road. I would say this and this hub world, my bad, is a solid 7.5 out of 10. I don't think it's bad. I don't think it's too insanely good, but it's just a pretty good hub world overall. I, I mess with it. If I was to play through SWAT Force, this hub world, I do like it. And considering SWAT Force is one of the first games I ever played, I do have some nostalgia for it, so that might help it a little bit. Overall, not a bad hub world, though. Not just, it's not top notch or anything. I think it's a good, solid hub world. And now moving on to Trap Team. I think Trap Team's hub world is pretty split between the community. Somehow it feels very expansive and condensed down at the same time. It has sort of the same thing that Giants has, where every room you enter, feels like you're still in the same spot. The academy is absolutely massive, and I didn't realize this. I always knew there were a lot of little secrets to find, but till the other day when I actually played through this hub world again, there are so many more rooms than I ever realized there were, or at least that I haven't been in it forever, which really does make this hub world feel expansive, which I can respect it for. But at the same time, since you're just in this academy that has the same sort of look the entire time you're exploring it, it doesn't ever feel like you're going into a new room with anything new or interesting because everything sort of always looks looks the same. Is that a bad thing? I would say that it's not a good thing necessarily, so that does sort of hold back how cool this hub world can really be, the fact that nothing really changes as far as the graphics or art style or anything. I know those don't necessarily need to change, but just how the game feels and how everything looks and the design of sort of different spots of the hub world, they all look the exact same as you're exploring, although each room does have its own different purpose. Um, Everything is just kind of shoved into one hallway as well. Once you enter the academy, or sort of once you enter sort of the back area of it everything is just sort of one big straight line with branching off paths which does make it feel like 
weirdly straight line and weirdly almost like a level and less like a hub world which should a hub world should be pretty open and it shouldn't sort of force you down one lane which is kind of what trap team does which is pretty interesting and kind of weird there is a decent amount of stuff in this hub world overall there's a a good amount of like these uh these side scrolling platform sections which is kind of interesting they have their own music play it's kind of it's kind of cool being in those sections of course there's normal training dummies and persephone and npcs to talk to you can also access a lot of different areas from this hub world like you can and you can access brock's arena challenge the chaos tomb challenges all of the um you can see all the adventure pack levels from this hub world and you can go into them physically by interacting with them an npc will come up to you which is really cool i really like how that works i think that's a really fun way to do adventure packs and something that this uh that this hub world actually handled very well and overall, I just think there's a decent amount of stuff to do. In addition to that, the villain vault being there is kind of cool. It's kind of like the big centerpiece, which of course, it's probably good that it centers around the game's main gimmick, which I can really respect it for. I think the villain vault was handled pretty well, and it's cool that it's right there. It's like the first thing you see in the academy, and it does feel like this sort of magical or like mystical spot in the academy that's really fun to interact with. And there's some villain quests. If you dig deep down enough, you can find Hootsicle and Chaos's villain quests in the academy, which are chaos is questionable it's kind of just bake a cake and it's sort of just a quick dialogue hootsicle does actually get his entire level though which is kind of cool but those are interesting they're kind of tucked away in the academy and in places that aren't exactly the easiest to find but if you wander around you will eventually find them there's a good amount of stuff here i can see why a lot of people complain with it though it just feels very big with a lot of different rooms but the rooms are small and they're all like intertwined in this long path that kind of makes it difficult to find anything but once you find a room that you haven't seen in a while it's really cool it's like oh wow i just found this new area and there's a lot of new areas to find overall i think trap team's hub world is a solid 8 out of 10. i think this is a good hub world a little bit better than swap forces not as good as spires ventures though i think this hub world does a lot of stuff right but it also misses in a few places which really what that's really what holds it back from getting a 9 or a 10 but still 8 out of 10 i think this hub world is a pretty good one overall now looking at superchargers i really don't know if my feelings towards this hub world come from it actually just not feeling as good as trap teams or just me thinking that the entire franchise jumped off a cliff after trap team but superchargers i really just think it feels like trap teams hub world but worse i don't think there's any part of this hub world that i like more than trap teams it does some interesting stuff being able to place items throughout the hub world is pretty cool but it's sort of a gimmick that's brushed to the side you never really need to do it you need to do it once and the sole purpose of that is just so that you do it it's not a feature that's used heavily enough and while it's cool if you actually use it no one really uses it i don't see anyone actually add these little props to their hub world although it's a cool gimmick the it does feel like the trap team hub with swap force graphics but i just i just don't think fits it i think the swap force graphics work well with the swap force hub but not with the trap team hub the trap team hub seems like it was made with from toys for bob developers and should have the toys for bob sort of art style that trap team has and not the superchargers one it just does not really make it feel right and then there's weirdly a lot of technology the entire villain vault was replaced with this whole like radio station section with cali operating these computer systems it's really weird tell me that has the same amount of magic as the villain vault it just does not at all there's also an entire weird section that has like this whole giant monitor display that you can watch all the cutscenes back on is that a feature that i like having access to from the hub world yes i'm glad it's there do i like that it's a giant computer screen in the middle of a skylanders hub world no this seems weirdly like a lot of technology if the spires adventure hub world had a massive computer system in the middle of it tell me that would not feel super out of place it just doesn't fit right with skylanders i know they have some technology but it really shouldn't be anything to this extent a lot of the magic that was there in the trap team hub world just got absolutely removed for all this technology and i don't really know why i get there's cars and boats and ships now that really make the game have to take more of a technology it's sort of based with this with this hub world but i really think they took it to an extent they didn't need to the cars and of course the ships and the boats already have all that technology so leave it to that and let's keep the magic in the hub world but they just did not do that most of the extra side content here is also vehicle sections this is kind of more of an issue with superchargers in general but the fact that like half the half the entire hub world is faced on is or is based for just the racing mode in general and then all the little side areas are all these vehicle elemental gates i think it just ruins the whole concept for me and it just does not work i really don't like 
I really don't like that system. I think there should be side content where you actually get to play normal Skylanders and it's not all in vehicles. It is also kind of cool that you can go, this kind of off topic, this is something that I like about Supercharged Hope World. You can go up and actually see Chaos and Glumshanks after you finish the game, they're above Eon, which I think is kind of cool. And that room with Eon is definitely probably the coolest part because it does give Trap Team vibes. I mean, he was stuck in Trap Tanium, which is really cool. It's really random, but that's probably the coolest part because it does still give off that Trap Team energy. Also, the Greeble shop, or the Greeble shop, the Greeble dispenser, where you get to fight the Greebles, is pretty interesting, nothing too crazy though, and I think it's a fun gimmick, being able to fight enemies in the hub world, and then there's a shop, which is pretty cool, you can buy soul gems and hats and other stuff, but this is also in Swap Force, and uh, and I think Trap Team, and maybe even Giants too, so nothing too crazy there, so, uh, Super Jar's hub though, I still think, is just not as good as trap teams it's just not for me personally but so i'm gonna actually have to give it a 5.5 out of 10 doesn't do anything too bad but it's just not for me i think it just kind of ruined everything that made trap team feel super magical in the first place now the imaginators hub might be the most controversial one this one seems to kind of be you either love it or you hate it and it makes sense because this one is vastly different from everything else we've seen into this in the series up to this point of course there is the whole gimmick of levels can no longer be accessed from the menu but you have to actually physically go and find them in the map you can no longer access them from the menu but you can find every one of them from the hub world whether you like this or not is really up to you but i personally think it's kind of cool at this point i know where all the levels are so it's not a big hassle for me to go and find a level so i think it's a cool gimmick walking to it and of course your speed is upped by a ton in this hub world which is kind of a weird gimmick and kind of makes a lot of skylanders feel weird but it's i don't think it's something that really hurts the whole world in the end i like finding levels i don't think it's that bad people who don't like it i really don't i really don't get that i get it might be for the convenience factor if you're trying to speed run doing just level select or something then maybe that's annoying but that's a really niche thing anyways for how spread out this hub world is it also feels weirdly small it doesn't take long for you to feel like you've explored everything this hub world has to offer which is kind of weird this is supposed to be definitely this is supposed to be marketed as the biggest broadest most expansive hub world you've ever had and it feels like you can explore it all in like 20 minutes then you've seen absolutely everything there is to see some stuff is off in the corner in the corner hidden in this uh and this uh, hub world also has like multiple levels to it. Like there's a lot of verticality when it comes to this hub world, which some of you are going to like, some people aren't going to like. I think it's really cool. I think this hub world does really feel like Skylands because it's these floating Skylands. There's literally nothing else to it. Whereas even SSA was awesome, but it was very much on the land where these are a bunch of floating islands that definitely feels like Skylands, which I can really mess with. Um, There's not a lot to do in this hub world though. Something that I do really like is when hub worlds give you stuff to do. This one doesn't really have much other than surprise attacks which really just are kind of lazy just puts you in a section with some villains that you can fight nothing too crazy though overall even with there not being too much to do and it feeling like you can still explore this hub world very quickly i still really like exploring it i think it's fun to walk around and just see these new locations and of course there are hidden areas and stuff where they use multiple types of movement throughout the hub world to access which i can very much appreciate having that and despite all the negative that this hub world gets i do really like it i would praise this for being one of the best in the series i don't think it's anything too bad or anything too good but i think it is probably top two maybe maybe even top three it's a good hub world i think it does not deserve all the hate that it gets it's also worth noting it has like the entire trap team and supercharger skylanders academy inside of it which is kind of weird and it requires a weirdly long loading screen to get into it but there's some cool stuff in there what i do like about it is that it undid a lot of the wrongs that superchargers did and brought back sort of that magic mystical feeling that trap team's hub world had and got rid of a lot of the weird technology from superchargers which i can really respect it for i really did like that um the content's still there in this hub world and there are still secrets to find there's rat there's the rat kingdom there's all the different um the battlefields and all of the sort of mini levels you can access at the brain and the cake missions will give you and you of course have to explore the whole world to actually find those so overall i think the map is definitely overhated and i'll give it a solid 8 out of 10 i do like this hub world i think it's really good overall of course these are all just my opinions and you could really like any of the scoundrels hub worlds i think overall there is a really good amount of diversity which makes all of them feel unique and fun and interesting in their own way which is part of the reason i like this franchise so much the hub worlds i think are very solid overall looking at all of them if you average out the score it would be pretty dang high which is a good thing the whole worlds of course you can like any of them that you <laughs> they're 
pretty much how I would say it is they're all good enough that you could have any of them as your favorite and any of them as your least favorite. And still, I would respect your opinion because none of them are really outliers for being absolutely horrible. None of them are outliers for being absolutely amazing. They're all just good hub roads and I like all of them. There's also a case that I'm not the biggest Spires Adventure fan, but I can genuinely say Spires Adventure has my favorite hub world. It's absolutely amazing. So I hope you guys enjoyed this video. Of course, it's just my opinion. Please feel free to let me know your opinion in the comments down below. But I hope you guys did enjoy. I'll see you guys in the next one. So long, everybody.